I feel like we live in a today and age in society where people do not know how to mind their own business. <laughs> and, and, and because we have such an unhealed society, we all we always looking for the faults in others to cover up our own, right? Because if somebody is doing worse than you, then it'll sometimes allow you to feel better about yourself, right? And so it's like, that's one of those areas in life where it's like, even when I think about leaders throughout time, I think about people throughout time, I don't want to know what they're doing in their relationships. That has nothing to do while I'm connected to them in the first place, unless the specific thing that I'm connected to them about is their relationship. Right? Like, we seen what that Will and Jada love end up being. We don't want that. Right? But I think it's the expectation that causes the disappointment. And somehow in society, throughout all of the history lessons and reality, we still expect perfect. Right? Even though we've never seen it, we've never got it, and it don't exist within our own demonstration and execution in life. Right? So, for me, when it comes to, you know, uh, conversation about relationships, I think that we have to go back to a place where people learn how to be private about relationships, right? So that they can develop a good one and learn how to do it right versus creating all these public expectations and people consistently fail. And then when they do fail, people trauma bond in public versus actually learning how to heal, go through it, move forward, create a better process, right? Be a better human being because I'm nowhere near perfect. I'm a growing man always trying to learn. Shit. <laughs> I'm a... I'm always growing and trying to learn to be better, but nah, I'm, I grew up in uh, crazy environments, man. That, 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 that gives you a lot of things that you have to heal from. It gives you a lot of trauma that you have to unlearn. It gives you a lot of examples that you have to unlearn and reprogram self. So I feel like my relatability to a lot of people is that I'm not perfect, right? I'm a, I'm a, uh, uh, I'm a construction in progress. Well, you know, 50% of marriages work out. Right, and I really want people to start looking at it like that because we too often focus on the things that we don't like, right? And it leaves us ignorant on what we actually want and what we actually do like. What are the actual best practices when it comes to relationships? When it comes to, you know, and not just even intimate relationships as far as, you know, sexual ones or romantic ones or whatever, but relationships are all spectrums. I think people are not good at relationships, period. Right? I think when it comes to friendships, when it comes to family, right, um, networking, people are just not good at relationships anymore. And I think it's because we're so self-centered now in society, right? And we lack empathy and good communication skills for proper comprehension. And when we don't go through the proper healing within ourselves, we don't even know why we're continuing in these cycles that we do when it comes to relationships. And so without actually healing, which is a process that everybody has to go within. You have to heal your inner child. You have to understand what's your attachment styles. Why do, why do you communicate the way you do? Why do you find certain things bored because you may grow up in an environment where you're used to chaos? Why you need to be constantly stimulated instead of being in a place of peace, right? Like, there are so many different nuances that you have to go through as a human being and to strip away all of these things, you know, that you've been through by the time you meet a person. They're not just dealing with the part of you that they like. They're dealing with the part of you that's unhealed. They're dealing with the child that was abandoned. So now he has abandonment issues, right? They're dealing with the child that's seen chaos in a household. So your, your view of love is now skewed, right? You, you're dealing with that person that doesn't know how to communicate their ideas or their thoughts, right? So therefore they seek outside joy because inside the house, this part is too hard for them. So it's like, this the art, right, and the way of relationships, the proper handling of self and a proper handling of people. We have to get back to the art and the science of things. And I really want us to stop thinking that relationships are something that you can just wing. It's, it's, it's you have to be almost trained, right? If we go back into uh, in, in time, you know, there was times where young women and men were trained how to deal with men and women. Right? Women were trained, you know, for whether it was from the grandmother or grandma or the women of that community. Hey, you know, when you go to other, this is that third about men. This is how men think, this is how men move, this is what men like. Men would talk the same thing. This is what you got to do for a woman. This is how to provide. This is the expectations. So we no longer even have that training anymore. So therefore, we don't have the skill set of relationship and family building.
Every yes, yes, there's specific roles. Everybody believes that there's specific roles, you know, because everybody believes that men should protect women, right? And so when people say that they don't believe in gender roles, it's a lie. It's just they want to be able to customize the gender roles that they find comfortable, right? But it's it's super cap. You know what I mean? Because the moment that the man, man doesn't protect the woman, he's definitely going to get ostracized by society for not playing his role, right? That has been happening for eons. It happens by people who consider themselves feminist, single, bitter, whatever it may be. You still have an expectation of a role not being met, which would cause us the conflict in the first place, right? It's the lack of us being able to properly, you know, fit within our roles. But here's the thing. You can't have an effeminate man and a protector at the same time, right? See, sometimes we create the contradictions, right? And then get mad, right? That the roles no longer exist. But then you said you wanted somebody soft, sensitive, sensitive and effeminate, and, but you want a protector. But the protector is the masculine that takes on this role to say that I'm going to, you know, cover you up and down. I got you. That's the man whose testosterone got to be a little more boosted. He may have to go through training. He got to do the workout. He has to have a certain bravado. He has to be capable of violence but live in peace, right? This is a, a balance that is no longer taught within society. And so, you know, roles are necessary to establish. Men all up and down throughout the world would tell you almost 100% that they want a feminine woman, right? And I think that, so when a man says feminine woman, he's talking about a woman that is in connection to her nature, the soft elements that make her who she is, the virtuousness, right? The when we think about our idea of a woman, we think about the essence of feminine energy, right? We think about the ability for her to be able to mature things and grow things and multiply things and create peace in an environment to be a stimulator and, you know, this is what we think about when we think about a woman, ideally in a man's mind, his construct, right? So, but on the opposite end, I think, and people may agree or disagree, but I think that men have more definition of what they want in a woman, a woman than what women want in a man. Women know what they don't want in a man more than what they do, right? Because that's the conversation that circulates. Ask a woman what's a masculine man and she's not going to have a quicker answer. Ask her what's a toxic masculine man and she's going to have a quick answer. Right? And so men think about what they want. Women think about what they don't want. And that's not 100% across the board because nothing is, of course. I have to say that because in today's society we create arguments as if, you know, a person was saying that in the first place. But we're talking about dominant society and the unfortunate perspective that plays in the narratives that we see in media. And I, I understand why, though. It's like most women want, they, a, a lot of women don't like to define things because the defining makes it logical. And when you make it logical, you're thinking like a man, right? See, a man has to define things because we have a logical process that we go about when it comes to things, right? Women are more centered into their spirit and their emotion, right? And so that means that you want the vibe. That means that you want to feel the energy and the frequency, right? That means that as long as the vibe continues to stay strong, right? And you can go in this flow and this rhythm with me and this dance, right? Now, some women become more logical in the process because, number one, everybody is different. But when it comes to saying that, okay, these are my list of things that I want that are not negotiable But even that, you'll find a man that you vibe with and then he might not have those things on that list, but he gives you the butterflies, not because this is the best thing for you, but because this is what you're used to. So you get caught up in the cycle of what you're used to and then you may find a man that's boring to you because it's not what you're used to, but this man be, may be a man of peace. But it's not stimulating that same area, so you get caught in the cycle because what you like keeps you in the cycle of doing the same thing over and over. I think that women need to have better circles of womanhood, right? A man is not going to sit around and teach a woman how to be a woman, right? Uh, a, a, a young princess learns to be a queen, right? By another queen, not by the king. But what we have today is princess versus queen mentality, prince versus king mentality. The the princess in the, in the prince, you know, sometimes doesn't want to be king and queen, right? Today's society is more elemented in the Barbie and princess mentality. Um, we create emotional connections to fictional characters that kind of represent these, these ideological centers of who we think we are. 
right? So what ended up happening is you want to be this Barbie girl living in this Barbie world, right? You want to be this princess that gets everything. You know, it's it's a it's a subconscious layer of things sometimes, right? You want to be a princess that don't have to do anything but get the fruits of the labor. I don't want to help with the kingdom. Just bring me bags and clothes and rewards and gifts and protect me and shower me and, and the world is mine. That's this Disney uh, character archetype that's been shoved into the programming of little girls, right? To just wait for the Prince Charming to rescue. So we know that's a false ideology. That's not reality, but it's deep rooted in psychology, right? And so when a, when when you get a man that is building, right? So if you want to be a princess, unless a man wants, because a man will take care of a woman like he is his daughter, right? Like that is his daughter. He's going to protect you. He's going to shower you with love, energy. I heard someone talk about why men take it so hard in relationships because, you know, it's almost like losing a child, right? When you're no longer, because this is somebody you've been taking care of. That's, that's been under your protection and your guidance and now you have to give them to the world and they have to be under somebody else's protection and you start to think about their safety and even if you've done them wrong doesn't matter you still have that type of love so that responsibility does doesn't automatically relinquish right it's still attached to you emotionally and you don't think about that but see it's completely different on how we operate as men and women so we have to, if you get a woman that has a queen mentality, she's going to be like, all right, well, I help you with the, queen, the the kingdom, but I'm in the equity. You know what I'm saying? If I help you build, I help you build this place, I want 50% equity based on, you know, what I put into you and what I put into what we build together. That's somebody that's going to help you multiply what you have. See, a princess can be somebody that, do, that, that, that just takes but doesn't give back, right? But a queen is somebody that multiplies whatever you give her. So now you may have, shout out to the queen energy, you feel me? That's, but I understand how queen energy for a lot of young ladies, it sometimes feels like a lot of work. So it feels like they got a, a pop a bubble of a fantasy world in order to now jump into this role. When it's like, no, I just want to party, be with friends, kick it, enjoy life, and not think about responsibility, accountability, I'll wear whatever I want to, and you just shower me with all your love, right? And bro, like, yeah, and he like, damn, that do sound good for you. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm building over here, like, I got a kingdom, I got responsibilities, I'm gonna need, you know, it's, it's a strategy we got to go about, like, it, it's at this point, this generation, the man don't need a housewife, you need a business wife. You know what I'm saying? 